In this portion of the video, we're going to talk about enabling your multi-lab system to send and receive DICOM information. On your Windows desktop, which you can get to by pressing the exit button on your multi-lab start screen, you will see an icon that says Unetics DICOM. Double click on that with your trackball or mouse. This will bring up the SCP screen. You'll notice the tabs at the top here. We have SCP information, SCU information, modality work list information, tags, identifier, and about. We're first going to focus on this SCP screen as this is the DICOM image send screen. The first step is to go ahead and click in the box that says AE title and backspace out simple DICOM, which is a test setting that we use here at the factory. Type in the name of your AE title for your image send server. In this case, I'm going to use GE PAX. Then click in the box here where the IP address goes and type in the IP address. Let's just say it is 192.168.0.10. The next tab we have here is where the port number of your image send server goes. And you want to make sure that these settings are set up from the start. Maximum PDU size, 32K is good. You want to make sure this is enabled, send to SCP. Now you'll notice up here, we have the ability to send to a number of different image send DICOM systems. So if you have a redundant backup server, you can simply enable AE2, type in the AE title of that one, the IP address, port number, change the maximum PDU size to 32, and enable the DICOM send. Moving along, timeout is how long the machine will try to send information to your PAC system. If you don't want to wait, you can set this to, say, 60 seconds. Going over here, if you want to crop the header, that will take the patient information out. Sometimes the information that you want for maybe research or a PowerPoint presentation you don't want to display the patient name and data. If you crop the header, that will knock that information out. Photometric interpretation should be RGB. The reduction should be 25%, and JPEG quality should be 100%. I'm going to disable this setting right here. And please note that your AE title information is case sensitive. So make sure you pay close attention to upper or lower case information. The SCU tab is going to contain information about who your multi-lab instrument is. The PAC server will assign the instrument its own AE title. And it can be something like Unetics 1, it can be US 1, it can be anything you want. But this is going to be assigned to you by your PAC's administrator. The modality work list tab is going to be the information from your modality work list server. Again, simple DICOM is the default, so backspace this information out. Enter the IP address of your modality work list server, the port number, and make sure that the enable send query to SCP box is checked. Tags is nothing we really need to do, talk about at this particular point. However, identifier is very important. If you do not have a serial number in this box here and a unique machine identifier in this box right here, your DICOM is not enabled and you must contact Unetics to have your DICOM set up. An important part of our DICOM settings is the troubleshooting. If we go back to that SCU tab, you'll notice that we have enable DICOM logging. If you check this box and then have errors, warnings, information messages, detailed logging, all DICOM attributes, all DICOM attributes send and receive, written, byte level data received, and byte level data sent. This will create a log file that will tell you if the communication is failing exactly which end the problem is on, whether it's a setting on our side or a setting in your DICOM that's not functioning. Now, after we have these settings all properly configured, you'll want to press the OK button to lock in those settings. Next, we're going to show you how to set up your IP address for the instrument itself.
And in this part, we're going to set up the Unetix Multilab itself with the proper IP address, default gateway, etc. To access that information, click Start. Mouse on up to where it says Settings, and then roll over to where it says Network Connections. Left click once on that to Local Area Connection, and right click once. Scroll down to Properties, and left click once, and then move the cursor down to highlight TCP IP and then click on the properties button. Typically you're going to need to assign an IP address to your multi-lab instrument and if you click in this box here that will open up the IP address box, the subnet mask, and the default gateway. Enter the information as follows. Sometimes you'll be required to enter a DNS filled out, simply press the OK button and we can test. 